Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Thomas Crone, a master's student at Texas Tech University. So Thomas, before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Right, yes. Yeah. So first and foremost, thanks for having me. Uh, really excited to share my research with you today. And I grew up in southeastern Illinois in a little town called Marshall, and I grew up showing pigs and sheep uh, in 4-H, and I uh, ended up going to the, the junior college route to Lincoln Lake Community College. Uh, I was on a member of the livestock judging team there, uh, where I then found my way to Iowa State University. I completed my undergrad, uh, met my current boss, Amy Petrie, and followed her to Texas Tech, where I, this week, will be finishing up my master's here in swine nutrition and physiology. Awesome. So let's talk about some of the work that you've done for your master's thesis. I saw that there was like three separate studies um, that were performed about using fiber and gestation diets. Would you mind uh, sharing the results of some of those? Yes. Yeah, we took, uh, we, I did a, a sow metabolism study where we took 36 sows and we assigned them to treatment at day 36 of gestation and assigned them to two diets, uh, insoluble and soluble in nature with corn DDGs and our insoluble diet and sugar beet pulp in our soluble fiber diet. Uh, both with and without a multi-carbohydrate product there to a two-by-two two factorial design. Uh, we then carried those sows through two identical metabolism collections at day 50 and day 99 of gestation, and then they were off treatment there at day 108. Uh, with that, we took everything from uh, serum and plasma for blood marker analysis of oxidative status and immunity, as well as uh, total fecal and urine collections during uh, the metabolism portion uh, for energy balance, and as well as uh, fresh fecals at the allotment of treatment for some microbiome work that we hope to finish up this summer. Uh, but really a, a whole gamut of things uh, there and samples taken um, at two different time points uh, with two levels of fiber and two levels of enzyme. We have so, uh, some super interesting results in, in our opinion and, and differences in uh, digestibility of our insoluble and soluble fiber diets, where we have improved total tact digestibility of neutral detergent fiber in late gestation, as well as an improvement in digestibility uh, with the carbohydrates supplement. This is uh, remains through uh, gross energy as through our insoluble fiber diet and with our carbohydrates. We also see that Carbohydrates in this situation or a multi-carbohydrate has the ability to target specific substrates found in the diet where sows fed our soluble fiber diet have improved digestibility of acid detergent fiber largely targeted uh, by the cellulase um, in that product uh, that we see in sows at mid-gestation. However, sows fed Insoluble fiber or supplemented with corn DDGs with the carbohydrates have improved digestibility of hemicellulose, largely comprised in our corn DDGs diet uh, with the carbohydrates as well as late gestation. So something uh, that we feel like can be further utilized there um, with specific ingredients in sow diets. Additionally, we see a 146k callop uplift and digestibility intake and in sounds fed the carbohydrates as well as a 203 kcal uplift and metabolizable energy and in sows fed the multi-carbohydrates. A few of the blood marker data uh, that we find interesting are um, sows in late gestation have improved both total antioxidant capacity and circulating malandial malandialdehyde. Additionally, there are two major pro-inflammatory cytokines such as IL-8 and TNF-alpha that were both reduced with the carbohydrates product as well as IL-1 and IL-2 increased in sows fed soluble fiber with the carbohydrates. There's a few other things that, that stick out to us uh, as, as interesting findings in this um, kind of in this realm of digestibility and energy, um, that sows have the ability to increase their digestive efficiency um, across gestation. And we feel like that can be key uh, working into the transition period, uh, realizing some of that data coming out of the late 
of Peter Thiel Lab. Additionally, in, in our third uh, manuscript that but we'll publish um, off of this research, uh, differences in terms of water absorption um, and fiber type. Uh, we feel that there could be a shift um, in our industry to think of fiber based on its composition of NSPs, rather um, insoluble and soluble, uh, so we can target um, sow diets specifically based on their composition um, rather than other general solubility. Uh, the more of that work out of uh, Peter Thiel's lab shows us that uh, we have the ability in late gestation to reduce constipation um, in those sows pre farrowing. Um, and we think that some of this data from our soluble fiber diets showing increased, showing an improvement in both water binding and water holding capacity in sows fed soluble fiber and in late gestation um, leads us down uh, that track as well in terms of fecal hydration characteristics. Another interesting uh, finding that we have is that sows fed soluble fiber or sugar beet pulp have decreased urine output with increased fecal moisture. So we observed a more repartitioning like effect of that water in the hind gun of sows uh, from the urine uh, to fecal and we believe uh, that it is the type of fiber there, the soluble fiber that's creating viscous gels um, in the gastrointestinal tract of those sows that's drawing uh, more of that water um, is, our, is our working hypothesis. As well, with a, a bit of that water data, um, neurotransmitters and uh, gut motility markers such as PYY and CCK, um, very stark differences in those in terms of fiber type and, uh, and rounding out with some work uh, that uh, will lead us further um, in that gut-brain axis area. So on the, the data that you had for the repartitioning the water from the urine output to the fecal output, um, did you, you see like that same result with both the insoluble fibers from the distillers grains as well as the soluble fiber, or was it better with the specifically with the soluble fiber? Right. The soluble fiber was our response um, in, in terms of fiber in, in both urine output and fecal moisture. Uh, and that's, in our opinion, attributed to um, the, the solubility um, of that fiber, sugar beet pulp versus corn DDGs, uh, where corn DDGs is often thought to um, increase a rate of passage. And so if a soluble fiber uh, that creates more viscous gels and is slowing down that transit time, um, that's where we feel uh, we're getting that extra fecal moisture in the rear hindgut um, of those sows. They are just kind of sitting um, in the colon. Gotcha. And the other question I had for you, so with the extra energy that you're getting from feeding these fibers, I, I would say as an industry, if you had to pick one way or the other, we tend to overfeed sows at least more often than we underfeed sows. So with this extra energy that you're getting for feeding fiber, is that something you think that nutritionists need to account for in their calculations and planning out the diets for these gestation sows? Yes, I, I do feel that uh, with fiber in the presence of this multi-carbohydrate that improved our energy uptake, I do think that that in the future is something we could get to. I don't know that right now we really have the capacity or really just the amount of data to uh, really put an accurate number across a large group of animals for the consistent energy uptake that we're going to get because I think it's it's going to be um, it's going to it will fit with your with your ingredients it'll fit with your products and I think there uh, will be a lot of differences I um, in terms of that I think I, I don't think we're there yet but I do think uh, that we could definitely be um, in the future for sure. L Biotics, the pioneer postbiotic for digestive health in pigs. Brought to you by Adair Biome. With over a century of experience in postbiotics for digestive health, L Biotics contains heat treated lactobacillus cell bodies and their metabolites. Stable by nature, L Biotics can be easily stored and incorporated in compound feed. Gotcha. Well, I believe that's all the uh, time we have today, so I appreciate you taking the time to come on the show. Yes, thank you very much for having me. Uh, it's a big honor and I greatly appreciate it.
Yeah, absolutely. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode and we are constantly on the lookout for the latest updates in swine nutrition. And if you have a swine nutrition related research trial that you would be able to share on our podcast, please send an email to nutritionblackbelt at swineit.com and we would love to talk about your research. See you later.